Hi, this is Dr. Nikki Newton. I am so excited to be here with you today to talk about the first grade critical areas. First thing, you need to think about the kindergarten critical areas. Counting and cardinality is a critical area that first graders absolutely have to know, and many of them probably are still struggling with that. And so you want to go back and make sure. I would spend the first month of first grade really reviewing those counting and cardinality standards. Remember that car counting and cardinality is not a, a domain in any other grades. So after you've done that and your kids really know that, then I would go into the critical areas in first grade. And those critical areas are operations and algebraic thinking. Kids need to know the strategies. They have to know their basic facts. Get a necklace with 1086 on it. 1086 is all the strategies for your basic facts. Um, students also really have to understand the problem types. There's eight problem types. Check out the CCSS math PDF page 88 and you will see those problem types. It's also in the math progressions on page seven and nine. You wanna look at those story types. There's eight of them. Most of those story types are not in all the books um, in any kind of text. I've, I have yet to see a text that has all the story types in it. There's eight, we'll be talking about those in the video. So you really wanna make sure your kids have those um, critical areas mastered in operations and algebraic thinking. And then there's place value. Place value, tens and ones, that's a critical area for first grade. Kids really have to understand tens and ones. They have to know about measurement, you know, non-standard measurement, and then geometry, of course, because geometry is a critical area in every grade. So those are the critical areas that we will be exploring in this video, and hopefully you'll get lots of really good ideas on how to teach them. All right, today uh, what I really want to talk about is, no, stop. Start now. Oh, okay, because you can start wherever, right? Okay. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the um, dolt words of math, what I call the dolt words of math. Just like in reading, we have dolt words, dolt words, words you must know to be fluent. In math, it's the same thing. In math research, they're called the continuum or the sequence. Um, I call them the dolt words of math. And um, they start at zero and they go all the way through what I call lucky eight and lucky nine or what's known in the research as compensation. So the first set of facts plus zero facts your kids should know these, plus zero facts. And what I do is I give them flashcards. I don't give them flashcards though in just a way that they have to answer all of those flashcards. I, I give them flashcards and I say, what kind of fact is that? Right, and so the kids shuffle through and I might give them a whole set of flashcards and I might say, I want you to find all the zero facts today. Or I might give them, and then after you teach zero, you teach, one. What do you do when you have a one? What do you do when you're adding one to a number? It's just the next number. And we look at that. And then we look at the number line and we say, oh, if you're adding one to a number, if you are at 12 and you add one, you get to 13. If you are at eight and you add one, you get to nine. If you're at 16, you add one, you get to 17. So we always relate it to the number line. Remember, in the common core, number lines are really important. And then so you teach your zero facts. After your kids know their zero facts, you teach your lucky, your, your one facts, right? What do you do anytime you add one to a number? After they know one, you teach two. When you, after you add, after you learn that one is the number that sits next door, then you learn if you have a two, you just count on. Anytime you have a one or a two and you're adding, you just count on. That's the strategy. Remember that the common core is about strategies. And when it talks about addition and subtraction, it specifically says that in first grade, students are to develop an understanding of addition and subtraction and strategies for addition and subtraction within 20. And um, now, so plus two facts, you're always just gonna count on. And then plus three, the same thing, you just count on. So when you have a plus three fact, you're counting on, right? So kids should know, oh, if I pull a card and it is eight plus one, the thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go eight, nine, right? They just know that it's nine, they've counted on. They know, oh, if I pull a card with a three and I see three, I go, oh, it's nine, 10, 11, 12, I just count on. If it has a one, two, or three, you just count on. 
If it is a zero, the number stays the same. The kid should be able to know that and articulate that. So after you've taught zero facts, one facts, plus two, plus three, then you're gonna do facts within five. And that's the kindergarten um, standard. So by end of kindergarten, kids are supposed to have fluency through five. And so you do a bunch of facts, you do a bunch of cards, you give cards that where they're adding up to five. All right, so after you've done through five, then you start looking at facts through 10, right? Lots of different facts through 10. I really want to show you, you know, this would be a fact through 10. And so I wouldn't just ask the child, what is four plus six? I would ask them, what kind of fact is this, right? Because I want them to be able to recognize, ah, that's a plus 10 fact. It makes 10. So I also do a bunch of stuff with um, 10 frames. I make 10 frame cards. And with these 10 frame cards, what the kids have to do is they have to match the equation with the, well, that doesn't go there. They have to match the equation with the card. And then sometimes they match the expression. Remember that the Common Core says that kids will be familiar with both expressions where there's no equal sign and equations where there is an equal sign. And so I have them play that for um, facts through 10. So now we've talked about adult words plus zero facts, plus one facts, plus two facts, plus three facts, facts through five, and facts that make 10. Okay, and then you start doing doubles, right? Doubles, doubles facts. Three plus three, four plus four, seven plus seven. Remember when you're doing facts like this that you don't teach them just abstractly, that you want your kids to be able to actually um, see what that looks like. And so I would use counters and I would use pictures and all of that kind of stuff. So kids see seven plus seven, it's a doubles fact. Right, it's the same amount, it's a number added to itself. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want kids to be able to visualize what that looks like. So do a lot of work where they actually get to see it at the concrete level and then do it where they're drawing the pictures out. They roll a fact, they have to draw the pictures out to show that it's a doubles fact, okay? And after kids learn their doubles facts, what comes next? Doubles plus one. So then they start looking at things like seven plus eight. And kids should understand, and when I'm teaching doubles facts, kids should understand that a doubles fact and, the, and a doubles plus one, doubles plus one becomes easy because if I have five plus four, right? I have five, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then I have four, one, two, three, four. Five is just one more. This is doubles plus one, right? Doubles plus one. You want your kids to be able to recognize those double plus one facts. So the thing that I do with them all the time is I give them flashcards and they have to tell me what kind of fact it is. And here's some doubles plus one facts. Kids should be able to instantly recognize. Ah, five plus six. And they have to tell me five plus six is five plus five plus one more, right? And that's 11 because that five plus five is going to be 10 plus one more. And then, so they've learned plus zero facts, plus one facts, plus two facts, plus three facts, facts through five, making 10, doubles, doubles plus one. And then they're just left with lucky eight, seven, lucky eight, and lucky nine. We call them lucky because you just take one from the other number, take two from the other number, take three, and then you can add quick. So lucky seven takes three from the other number to make a 10. So if I saw 12 plus seven, I could just say that two, seven and two is 19. I could say I'm gonna make 12 a nine and a seven a 10 and I'm gonna get 19. Here's another lucky seven. Seven plus four, I could automatically make four, three, and one, and then say seven plus three is 10, plus one more is 11. So that's lucky seven. Lucky eight means anytime you see an eight, you make that eight a 10, and so here we would have 10 plus 10, which would be 20, right? Or the kids could just say 10 and eight and two is 10 and put those together and then that makes 20. 
and then there's lucky nine, which does the same exact thing, except that lucky nine now only takes one. So we have nine plus four, we make that nine a 10, we have 10 plus three, right? So the point is you have your kids sort their facts. We have nine plus seven, we're gonna make that nine a 10, we have uh, 10 plus six, which is 16 and so forth. Now, so to get kids to really practice, what I do is I give them templates, like this is a template, and I'll give them dominoes. And I'll say, I want you to open up your dominoes and I want you to sort your facts, right? And say this would be other. And I put them in a communicator or, um, you know, this is just, you can use sheet protectors that you put duct tape on to make decorative, and the, but this is just something that you can write on so you can erase. Here's a plus one fact, three plus one. Here's a, make, a zero fact, right? It's zero plus five. Um, here is a zero fact. Here is a one plus one, it's a doubles. Here is a two plus two, it's a doubles. Here is a five plus two, this is a plus two fact, so I'm gonna put it under other right now. Here's a six plus three, this is an other fact. Here's a two plus one, that's actually a doubles plus one fact, but we don't have a place for that on our board right now. Here's a two plus three, which is an other fact as well. Here's a six plus two, which is an other fact. Oh, actually we do have a place for doubles plus one, which is right there. Now, and here's five plus six, and that's a doubles plus one. Now, of course, I don't give the kids just all of those on the board. I might start it out with just sort the dominoes into plus one and other facts, or plus zero and other facts, or sort the dominoes today into doubles and then all the other facts, or doubles and doubles plus one and all the other facts. It depends where your kids are. But I do um, all kinds of work like that with kids for teaching basic facts. These are just centers where they're practicing. And um, I use the number line a lot, right? So they'll have, I have all kinds of number lines. I, I, I have the kids make their own, I buy them, I print them off the internet. At Sparklebox you can get some number ladders as well. And some other places if you Google number ladders they have them. Um, a number ladder is vertical, a number line is horizontal. But I'll have the kids do things like, oh okay, go five and then add two more, one, two. Right, so you're working at the abstract level. Remember anytime you're using a number line, or anytime you're using a number grid, you're working at the abstract level, okay? And then we do things like, I love Uno cards and you'll see me use them a lot. I'll have kids pull two cards. Five plus one, what kind of fact is it? Oh, it's a doubles plus, it's, it's, a, it's a plus one fact. The answer is six because one more than five is six. Here we go, here's another one. Here's four and if you're playing Uno, you get two more cards. In, in first grade, that's completely appropriate because kids are supposed to be able to add at least three cards. So they get four and four, they're gonna add those doubles together and make eight and then add three more, okay? So anyway, I use doubles cards to get kids, or uno cards to get kids to practice their facts and I ask them what kind of facts, so we throw that out and the kids say, oh, well, and, and sometimes you don't have to use the draw two. If you say you just want kids working on facts, you can take out all of those uno play cards and just use the numbers, oh, zero plus six, that is a plus zero fax. But if I had seven plus six, that is a doubles plus one. So we get kids to name the strategy that they're using to actually solve the problem. Go to the 99 cent store and get the Uno cards. All right. That is the first thing that kids are supposed to know, the, one of the critical areas. The second critical area is problem solving. Now, remember in first grade, there are eight problem types. And I'm getting this from the Common Core State Standards PDF pages 88 and 89. And 88 is the first kindergarten, first and second grade uh, problem types. In first grade, in first grade there's eight, in kindergarten there was four and then they just add four more. So in kindergarten, the problems that the kids are supposed to know that first graders should come knowing is first problem type, addition, results unknown. Susie had two apples, her mother gave her two more. How many does she have all total? So add two results unknown. Known. The next kind of problem first graders should know is take from. Susie had four, her mother took two. How many does she have left? The next kind of problem Susie should know is that Susie had two green apples and one orange apple. 
right? So that would be a part, part, whole. I love these color tiles because on um, the backs, uh, they have um, colors and then you can use them for like part, part, whole stories and, and fractions and all kinds of stuff. So Susie, let's say Susie had two uh, blue marbles and one pink marble. How many did she have all together? That's a part, part, whole story or a putting together story. And then the final kind of story for kindergarten that first graders should know is the both add-ins unknown where you say Susie had four apples, two were green, two were red. Um, or no, you say Susie had four apples, some were green, some were red. How many does she have of each kind? And then the kids have to figure out by drawing pictures and tables and so forth how many she had of each kind. Now, that is the four story types that first graders should know based on kindergarten. Then there's four more that they add. So here's the new types that are added to first grade. The first type is Susie had two um, apples and her mother gave her some more and now she has five. How many did her mother give her? It's called a start change unknown. And so you ha the kids have to figure out she had two and they know this is a five frame so they know she had to get three more total, right, start, change unknown, okay? The next time is actually the same thing. It's a change unknown, but it's a take from. So you say Susie had five apples. Her mother took some, but we don't know how many, and now she only has four left, okay? So that's a change unknown. We know she had four left, so her mother must have taken one, or she gave away one, right? Um, change unknown. So that, now that's six types that the kindergartners know. Now there's two other types. One is the part, part, whole, or the put together, uh, take apart with the part unknown. So you say, Susie had five apples, Four were red and the rest were blue or if there were blue apples that would not be good so uh, four were red and the rest were green so then the kids know oh four and then we're missing that part we know that the other one there there's one that must have been green if there were five apples total so that's part unknown and then the final type of story that a first grader should know they're called compare stories and that's just compare difference unknown stories so you say Susie has three marbles Jeanette has two how many more marbles does Jeanette Ha, uh, does Susie have than Jeanette or Susie has four apples Jeanette has two how many fewer apples does Jeanette have than Susie the fewer version is harder than the more version so those are the problem types remember there are eight problem types for first grade really important that you do all eight problem types that is one of the critical areas i tell problem types on the tin frame and on the double tin frame i also use story mats i would go to kidsparks.com because you can get a lot of if you just google math mats they'll come up and i also use a lot of stuff i tell a lot of stories with the wreck and wreck um, and if you go on my blog google wreck and wreck you can find tons of stuff if you go on the internet and just in general, in Google Wreck and Wreck, you can find a bunch of stuff. Wreck and Wreck, great tool. Absolutely, you should use it for storytelling.